Right, we're uh, um, currently in Queenstown <laughs> in New Zealand. Someone's pulling a Mooney against the window. Bum town. Yeah, bum town. I'm here with uh, Jeremiah Bubar, for, who's a product manager at Rockshock and, and uh, been with the company for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, uh, about 20 years part time, 16 years full time. Yeah, so there's not much uh, Rockshock that Jeremiah doesn't know about. And uh, we've been here uh, testing out the um, latest boxer that a major feature of which is the charger damper uh, that we've seen before in uh, the pike fork but normally we tend to see sort of the introduction new damping in downhill forks so I'd say it's fair to say uh, yeah. often gets introduced new technology so yeah. how can we saw it this time introduced in the pike well we saw the opportunity for uh, an improvement in our damping performance and kind of the genesis of the pike stuff started as a, as a downhill project in, in, in that arena. However, we saw a great opportunity for us to, to really make an impact on the, on the trail market, and so we reprioritized the Pike project over an update to the Boxer project. So the whole time we're doing Pike, we, we know that a downhill project is a piece of the puzzle and coming right on its heels. Yes, okay. And um, I'd imagine there's some people in your company, some. I don't know, marketing people that have probably been a bit worried about the fact, uh, you know, you've taken a step back in the number of adjusters on offer externally, which, uh, you know, normally we're used to seeing more and more adjusters. And um, so how did you, uh, how come you've gone down that route? I mean, we know it works great on the on the pike and so far we've seen it works great on the, on the boxer. But Well, it wasn't just internal people. I mean, honestly, when we introduced it to Stevie Smith's mechanic, Nigel, he was uh, pretty nervous because he's like, well, sometimes I use the high-speed compression adjuster and what's going to happen without it? And we're like, just try it and tell us if it doesn't work, we'll make adjustments. Um, and internally, um, you know, everybody can get behind, you know, making bikes more simple, right? Yeah. Like they don't have to be hyper complex to work phenomenally for you. And so if we can prove to ourselves that we can reduce the settings but still get all the performance we need out of it then why add extra adjusters to it so um that internally that was an easy sell people can really get behind that philosophy and i think a lot of riders out there can get behind having fewer adjustments and just having a bike that rides really well and it's very simple yeah and um but uh there is uh, some adjustments internally aren't there that you can do but how did you how did you come about the base setting i mean do you really feel that that main base setting can please a lot of riders? Yes, we do. I mean, we do we do enormous amount of testing, and uh, we feel strongly, especially uh, we confirmed a lot of this out on the World Cup circuit as well, where the, all but one of our athletes was on the exact same tune all season and really satisfied with that. And then as we, we went to uh, the rest of our testing crew, they uh, they all kind of settled in on the, on the same same tune so we feel really strongly that we've been able to accomplish a really broad range of users potentially even broader than mission control yeah. and then on top of that we've uh, thrown in some spare shims into the damper which allow you to then go even further in terms of uh, the range of adjustability this damper has but do you think that's a small percentage of people that will really need to tweak internally i th i think the the amount of users that would need to make that adjustment will be pretty narrow yeah the amount of adjust uh, people out there who want to make that adjustment, yeah. it's probably a pretty uh, large portion. P you know, there's a lot of people who are really into their suspension and want to get in there and personalize it, so I think it'll be desirable for a lot of people, but in terms of the amount of users who really are going to need it to get great performance, I think that's fairly narrow. Do you think that, it, can you attribute um, any one aspect of the damper that um, results in the, you know, I would say quite vastly increased performance over previous damper? Uh, it really comes down to attention to detail, and so it's no no singular thing. But it was you know the design team spending a lot of time really refining and really paying attention to um, to the oil flow paths, and as well as really perfecting the shim stacks that we came up with. So it you know there's no one thing we yeah. can point to as the magic bullet. Uh, it's just attention to detail. Okay. And um, you said you tried uh, the Pro Riders and, and internally as well, lots of different tunes. I mean, how many different tunes did you try? Just almost endless or? No, we, we narrowed it down pretty quickly um, to, to get some tunes that, that were kind of strong leaders. But I think we were in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 that we actually went out uh, testing with uh, a large portion of our users. So 
it, you know, it starts really broad and then we, we narrow it down quick um, because a lot of times we chuck one in, people do a run and they'll be like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, you, get, you get a number of people doing that, then you know you, you can kind of stop testing with that too. Yeah. Okay. And um, obviously the damper is only one side of the new fork, but it is available as an upgrade for older boxes. Yep. But um, I mean, how? What other benefits are there from the new boxer that would mean that someone should buy a new boxer rather than just upgrade their older one? Uh, we've also made adjustments to the chassis and really refined the alignment of the entire thing. So we learned a lot during the Pike project because uh, chassis alignment was a huge piece of that project. Uh, we've been able to apply uh, all that learning from Pike to the new boxer lower legs. In addition, we also had the fast black upper tubes, which a lot of people like. The, that Is that mainly an aesthetic thing more than yeah. anything? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a fashion thing, but yeah. Does pretty, look good. Pretty, yeah. pretty hot right now, we think. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, uh, cheers for your time today. All right. Yeah, certainly enjoyed riding them so far. Yeah, been yeah. fantastic. Thanks for coming out. Cool, cheers.